Okay guys, you've seen the thumbnail and you know what's coming. Today we do the brutal review for the Traxxas X-Max. Now this thing is big, it's bad, it's awesome, and I've been waiting for this video. You know, I have criteria that we have to meet, have to have it for more than four months. We have to run minimum 12 sets of batteries, and this has heavily exceeded that count. And it has to make at least one group event, and this has done way more than that. We've accumulated so much footage for this, we kind of had to condense it down to a highlight reel because we've had it for a long time now and we've had a blast. And this goes out with me on the regular. So I've got a lot of footage. Keep in mind during this footage, when you're watching it, keep in mind that I push it beyond to see what breaks. Now, I don't intentionally try to break it, but I do run at stuff hotter than I normally would. I push things farther. I'm not afraid to break things because let's be honest, I like working on these things. They're a lot of fun. What we're gonna do is go over this car. We're gonna show you what we had to change. We're not doing things just for fun. We, were we replace things that are broken and then we upgrade things so that they don't break again. If I break something a couple times, that part's getting changed out for something else. We'll show you what we changed. We'll explain why we changed it. I'll give you the part number to what we changed it to and we'll show you what those parts sell for in today's economy. Once we get past all of that, we're gonna ask our four questions. Those, are, those of you that watch this channel, you'll know what they are. The first three are rated one to 10, and the first question is, is this thing fun? That's question one, guys, is it fun? Question two, is it durable? And that means now. That doesn't mean what was it out of the box. We already did that video. This is how durable is it now that we've made all the changes. And question number three, is it worth the money? And that includes the cost of the upgraded parts, not just the car. We're gonna show you all of that, and then we're gonna show you where it places in our list. Now, keep in mind, if you've seen the top 15, you know basically where it was out of the box. But things change, guys. It may not place where you think it's going to. So let's get on with it. Okay guys, before we get into the actual review, let's take a look at the footage. Like I say, it's about four months worth of footage crammed into a cool little video for you so you can see all of the punishment we put this car through. This is after all a brutal review and what would that be without durability testing? So you're gonna get to see all of the durability testing we've done for this car. We like to hold it a little longer. We like to stay pinned and see what happens. We like to see cartwheeling. We like to see tumbling. We like to see crashes, but we don't intentionally try to break them. We run them full blast and if something cartwheels and breaks, great. That gives us something we can show you that we can show you how to improve on your car to make yours tougher. So without further ado, guys, check this out.
Okay guys, first up, let's talk about the radio. Now the TQ, it's a really good radio. This is the one that comes with it and it's got the gyro built into it. It's really comfortable in the hand. I've got big hands guys, but it is really comfortable in the hands. It feels stable. It's not light and flimsy. It feels pretty good in the hand. The spring tension on the trigger, it's nice and firm. It gives you a really good feel when you run it. The spring tension in the steering wheel, very good, very precise. Uh, it's got decent range and the reaction times are really good. So in my opinion, you don't have to upgrade the radio guys. This one's pretty good, but of course the options yours, you can change it if you'd like. And while we're at it guys, let's go ahead and talk about the handling. Now this car handles really well. The, like I said, the radio has a gyro in it, which does help. The tires are nice and firm and they do swell out and grip the ground really well. The nice thing about it, check this out guys. Look how big this is. Now, I'm not holding it away from me, as you can see. Look how big it is. I'm six and a half feet tall, guys, and this thing is huge. Now, the cool thing about that is, you know, this will take a tree that's about that big around while it's laying on the ground, and you can usually just power right over this. Now, you don't want to catch it on a corner because you can break arms doing that, but if you hit her square on, you can usually get straight over them. This thing runs in nature really well, and that's something I'm very impressed with. It really does handle that situation really good. And if you've seen the videos before, you know that's where I like to run. On top of the handling, I like the way this thing handles the crashes and smashes on the body. Now, this is still the stock body, guys, and it's in pretty good condition overall. I did mangle the back when I came down just right on the back of the car but it flexed back into pretty good condition. There's a little line across here. There's a little tear there. There's a little tear here. But other than that, look at this, guys. It's still in really good shape inside and out. That framework really does help. And like I say, this is the original body. I haven't changed it yet. And I really like this feature. Drop it on, push it forward, click it down, and it's on. There's no hood pins to play with. In my opinion, that is a very slick way to handle it. If you do take a brutal impact, it'll just cast the body off the car or cartwheel and you just pick the parts up, stick them back together and away you go. And it takes very little time to do so. On top of that, guys, let's talk about the tires for a second. Now, these are the ones that come with it and I did rupture one of those. And what it comes down to is this thing, people try to rock it back and forth and get it on its tires, you know, when it's turtled. And they do do that, but the tires, after a little while, they soften up and they don't handle it as well as they should. So what happens is these things get thinner. When they stretch out and balloon a few times. They get a little thinner. You get a small cut in it somewhere, whatever. And as soon as you spin it up, it handles the straight spin up pretty good, guys. But what happens is when you're spinning this up and one tire makes contact with the ground, let's say this one touches the ground, Okay, with the differential action that's in there, it's gonna transfer all this power to this side and it's gonna double the speed of that tire and it's gonna take it out really far until the tire gives. And it's not that it can't handle the speed. If you're running at top speed, it handles that just fine. But in the differential, if you lock one tire down, it doubles the speed of the other one and the tires aren't rated to take that. Now, I don't wanna change out the tires because these work really well. They're light, 
so they're not as heavy as some of the aftermarket ones and the problem with adding tires that are heavier is from the swing arm point to the edge of the tire that gives a certain amount of leverage for the weight so what that means is this car is built to handle the weight of these tires at the distance from the swing arm point so it can handle it if you put more weight out here then your arms are going to fail more often because there's more weight giving more leverage to break more parts so if you're going to change tires try to keep something that is similar in weight to what comes on the car because that's the way it's designed so let's go ahead and get down inside this beast and i'll show you what we've had to change okay so the car inside here is pretty much stock it's still got the stock motor stock speed control stock servo and stock radio everything is just fine um, i ha do have the traxxas connectors on here and i am going to change those because we do use ec5 here and uh I'm just not a fan of these. That's just the way I roll. So everything on the top end here is all stock. However, we did destroy the front bumper and the rear bumper. This whole assembly, we've changed it twice. And I knew these were going to be weak points. I knew they were going to be a problem. Keep in mind that part of the time we were running this car, we were running it at a really low temperature. So I understood it then. It's warmer out now and I'm still breaking these things. I think they need to be just a little beefier down in the arms here, but it is what it is. If you want the look of the car, you're stuck with these. I was really surprised that the wheelie bar held on. This is a really tough wheelie bar and I have been unable to break this. Now, on the other side, take a look down here, guys. So we've changed some things in here. Now, I've repeatedly broken arms in this car for the stock ones and therefore the arms just don't seem to handle the weight as well as i would like so i did switch everything over to rpm on the arms and i have yet to break one of these and i have tragically crashed this car a few times and the rpm arms hold up way better than the stock ones so i've made some pretty good changes here right here is the steering linkage and that if you take a look connects to the outer hub carrier now I broke several of these so I went ahead and changed it over to aluminum one that did add a little bit of weight but I think it was worth it also with the rpm arms it's a lot more flexible here it takes the flex really well and we have the rpm out drive carriers now initially if you want to take a look at this I went ahead and replaced them with the stock ones. Now the stock ones aren't very expensive. You can see that right there. They're not overly spendy, but they are a pretty thin looking part. There's a lot of perforation down in there. It's just not a very strong part. Look at all the channeling that they put in it. This is solid and it's oversized. It's bigger than this and it's really durable. And the same can be said for the back. So when we get to the back ones, you can see that see all the holes and the channeling inside there they do that to keep the weight down right but it also adds sort of a frailty to it when you take a look at the rpm ones they're bigger there are no openings this is solid plastic and it really holds up well now initially when i broke these i went ahead and i put the aluminum ones on them and these are really strong they're a pretty good pretty good part but we did find a problem with the aluminum ones. And what that is, is the aluminum ones, when you have them in here, it's a really solid piece and it has a tendency to snap these pins off. And I broke several of the pins with the aluminum ones in there. But the RPM ones, they're soft. They'll take the flex and it won't transfer it to the pin nearly as much. So it hasn't broken any pins since I've switched to those. So just to touch on the tires for a moment, you know, these aren't overly expensive considering their size, but I still think they're the best tire for the car. Weight and power, it can handle both. However, they do spin up pretty, they pie out pretty thin when you get that RPM going, and it's hard to find a tire that can put up with that. I've even blown belted tires on some of my other cars when they spin up so fast that the belts can't even hold them up and it pops them. So, you know, these tires, I think, are still the best tire for the car for all around use. 
And let's talk about the shocks for a minute. You know, these are great big shocks and they handle everything pretty well. I've had no issues with the shocks. They function properly and I haven't even had to change the oil in them. The suspension works very well. Everything is very smooth and the shocks handle the weight perfectly. I haven't even had to adjust them from the box setting. So I'm really impressed with the shocks. The chassis is still in good shape. I haven't had any drivetrain issues to speak of. And come on guys, you've seen us beat this thing around. We've punished this thing properly and it holds up really well. So in my opinion, it's time to get on with four questions. Okay guys, question one. Is this thing fun? You know, it's kind of a silly question when you really think about it. Yes, this thing's fun. It's one of the biggest beasts I have. It's super fast, it's super fun, and with the modifications we put into it, it's super durable. Now, I haven't experienced any drivetrain issues, no servo, no speed control, no motor issues. The gearing is still good. I don't have unnecessary sounds going on in it. And this came straight off the shelf. The wife bought this for me for my birthday and it's just one you go and pick up in the box so it's not like i was sent a special one this is as stock as they come now we did make our parts changes but the drivetrain and the controlling system is still stock and working perfectly as far as fun goes is this thing fun absolutely this thing is an utter blast to play with so where does it rate on the fun scale well for me guys I'm going to have to say this one rates 9 out of 10 for fun. And question number two, is this thing durable? Absolutely this thing's durable. With the modifications we've made to the car, this thing is as tough as they come. Like I say, I haven't experienced a whole lot of the issues some of the other people have. I can only rate this car as I see it in front of me. This thing is super durable and it's a blast. So as this one goes for durability, you know, with being the brutal review and everything, and we have had to change quite a few parts in it. For now though, with the modifications, I'm going to give this one nine out of 10 for durability. Okay guys, and question three, is this thing worth the money? Well, you know, with the upgrades and everything, you figure we're right around 929 for the car as it shows on the website today, plus about $212 in upgrades brings us to $1,142 for the X-Max as it sits on the table now. Now, of course, that still doesn't include batteries or a charger, so you'll have that expense on top of that. But is this thing worth the money? Well, you know, that's subjective because if you have the money for it, I highly recommend this car as one of your go-to bashers. It's big, it's fun, and I've said that a lot, but it's true. It is one tough truck. If you change out the parts we recommend, it makes it a lot more durable and therefore a lot more fun to play with. If money's tight for you right now, I don't know if that's going to be worth it. If money's not a problem and you can afford the price tag, definitely go for it. As a rating from 1 to 10, is this thing worth the money? You know, it is quite a bit of money, guys, and I'm going to have to rate this one 7 out of 10 for value. Okay, guys, and question number 4. Where does this stack up in my collection? Now, if you've watched the top 15 video, you know this place is in second place. Okay, so it's holding down the number two spot in my list. But this has changed positions, guys, and I know this is going to irritate a few of you and you won't agree with me, but that's okay. This is my opinion. These are my cars and they're toys, guys. I mean, come on, let's get on with it. So what we have here is a pretty wide variety of cars. And the X-Max is big, it's fun, and it's taking over the number one spot in my collection. With the upgrades we have on it, it's tough, it's fast, it flies good, and it is an utter blast to drive. Taking over the number one spot in my collection, one ahead of the EXB, we have the Traxxas X-Max. 
Hey guys, if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. It's awesome when you do, and it lets us know here whether we're heading in the right direction or not. If you have any info that you can add to this, please feel free to put it in the comments down below and help others along the way. I'm AJ from AJ Jam Studios saying, keep bashing, guys.